Dear brothers and sisters, a warm welcome to one and all of you and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <clears throat> As always, I'm feeling very privileged and happy to be part of these sessions. I feel very blessed um, because it's a great time of fellowship, nothing else. And right here in our midst is greater that he is who is in the world and his name is Jesus, the Holy Spirit and Yahweh and blessed be the Trinity that's right here in the midst of us. And you and I need not have any better reasons other than this that we are in the middle of a very, very important discussion and a warm welcome to this series where we are dealing through the subject of this law of uncleanliness, right? And for that, you and I need to understand a little better on this uncleanliness or unclean spirits that instills uncleanliness inside of us. Yeah, to many people, they think this uncleanliness simply means um, it's actually something that to do uh, with the externals. I mean, I take bath every day, I brush my teeth and I'm all good. This is what many people think, don't they? But if you see, that is not actually what Bible mentions. And I made it very clear, this is our fifth session or something like that. We have made it very clear, yes, if you are a Christian, of course, you got to be externally clean. You cannot be like the hippies and yeah, and you cannot move around according to your will and wish and start doing things in your own ways. And that's as good as like misinterpreting, right? Misinterpreting the Bible. And <clears throat> that's where we need to be very, very careful. So we start to discuss from the book of Mark chapter 5 and we will go to Mark 1 also and we will discuss a few things from there. It's going to be a very, very interesting conversation. Um, not more than interesting conversation. It's going to be a very, very important conversation for every one of us. Why? Because this is one aspect where people generally don't tend to think beyond what they're supposed to think. Yeah, unclean and unclean spirits, <clears throat> demons and demon possessions. Don't think anybody is paying any attention to any of these subjects these days. Whereas there are plenty of preachers who speak on the lines of prosperity and yeah, so many things. And there are a lot of half-cooked vegetables. They pick one subject and they start talking according to their own desires, right? And very few people who have that sense of maturity to even talk the Bible in the way in, in they are supposed to talk. And that's why I'm very thankful to God that he had enabled teachers like us and many, many beautiful, wonderful teachers of God. They are able to narrate the Bible as us. So we've spoke from the book of uh, Mark chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. We stopped there. And we spoke about demons and demon possessions. And we also clarified to one and all of you that the demons are the one who possess a person by force. And it's unnecessary for the Holy Spirit to possess anyone by force. Yeah. It's other way around. You have to invite him by force, emphatically. You need to ask him, please come into my life. I need your help. Sick and tired of these kind of sinful deeds, failures in my life, errors in my life. Don't want to go through this depression. Don't want to go through this sense of loneliness. Holy Spirit, please have mercy. Come into my life and he's going to come. Yes. He always expects that respect, right? And he deserves that respect. The sense of respect is important uh, to invite the father because he's the father of the universe. He's the one who runs the universe and all the galaxies and all the things, right? And planet Earth is one speck on this big universe and you can imagine how big he is going to be thrown in the heavens and footstool on, our, footstool on Earth and you can imagine how big is 
image is going to be and what temple are going to build. This is what God asks us in the book of Isaiah, you can read. So you've got to be very careful when you deal with these kind of spirit-related topics and spirit-related matters. I told this many times, we are living in the spiritual life and anything and everything that you have to deal with is to do with the spirit and body, mind, spirit, soul series, 87 sessions we have spoken there, it's available for your, for your visibility. You can go through it and you will understand at the end of 87 session that how much it is important to deal with your spirit, which is the mediator between the body, mind and the soul. Yeah. Actually, it doesn't, soul doesn't do anything other than witnessing everything. And the nature of the inner man is preserved with the help of the spirit, body and mind. And spirit listens to either the Holy Spirit or the evil spirit. It depends. Yeah. The spirit is in deception, then it listens to the evil spirit. The spirit is in complete light and this heavenly wisdom, then it listens to the Holy Spirit. And it's filled with the gifts and the fruits of the spirit. And you will see that inner man rejoicing. Yeah, why? Because the nature of the soul is the image of God and it desires always the right things to be done. That's the character of God. Because he cannot even look into the places where it's filled with wickedness or evil. He, he is called as the, uh, you know, God who is having the eyes of purity. And therefore, you need to understand this very clearly that God has nothing to do with this sin or sinful deeds. Never ever assume that God is tolerating with me and still living inside of me. Absolutely no. He is merciful. Yes. He is waiting for you to come back to repentance and reconcile with him. Very true. But Holy Spirit doesn't dwell in you. You are demon possessed. You are being filled with the evil spirit. If you are going to live your life in sin knowingly. Unknowingly is a different aspect. Or willingly. Unwillingly is a different aspect. Willingly and knowingly you can be very sure if you are involved in any kind of sinful practices, you are separated from the love of the God Almighty and the companionship of the Holy Spirit and the grace of Jesus is still waiting readily to accept you. Yeah, it's not taken yet. Grace of Jesus will be taken the moment the spirit of Antichrist descends on this place. Spirit of Antichrist is already available and a lot of things you know, right? The ruler of earth is uh, evil spirit. And the demons, they are around the world. But Antichrist will take his form and that's called his great tribulation. Three and a half years and three and a half years, seven years. First three and a half years, he will portray himself as the most, you know, kind person that the world ever witnessed. In the next three and a half years, he will sit in the temple and ask everyone to worship him. And that's where the eyes of the Israelites would be opened, Bible says. Yes, that's exactly the point of time grace will be taken back. But until that point of time, grace is available for you. Yeah. But it's not within you. It's not inside of you. But it's outside. But the person who sins unknowingly, the Holy Spirit will help him to know the sinful deeds. But then unknowingly, if the person sins and continues to stay in, continues to stay in the presence of the evil spirit and continues to stay in demon position, state and all, state of mind and stuff like that. The Holy Spirit is going to be outside. Romans 8, 26, he is going to be grown and pray and intercede for this guy, but he can't do anything. The Holy Spirit is helpless. And a person, I'm talking about the four different categories and I will step into this session very shortly. Okay. Knowingly, willingly, they belong to the same category. They are demon possessed and they hate the spiritual desires and they love the worldly pleasures. A person who does sinful or involved in sins unknowingly are the, is the person who is blindfold, right? Or the word of God is kept away from him. Yeah, for example, the traditional churches, they don't read Bible much. For them, everything is like social, even charitable deeds and Helping the poor and visiting the slum areas in a hospital. What happens to your soul? You go to hell. Seriously. Charity is one part of the, or maybe I would say it's it's one particle of your spiritual deeds. But it, it's not spiritual deed by itself. Are you living in that assumption that 
you are in charitable deeds you go to the slum areas you go help the poor orphanages you go and donate the money and all that are you thinking that you are possessed with a clean spirit you are already in deception sorry because why you have failed to examine your soul you have failed to allow the word of god to travel through your life and help you come back to your spiritual senses you have failed to introspect and understand the word of god is it is, is in you are you the doer of the word or just the hearer you have not been involved in any of these and what kind of uh, soul is that what will be the condition of your soul in dark state in deception unknowingly is another category four quadrants you can split yeah a person's life or a, man, a mankind's uh, what to say man, man mankind's state of mind you can split into four quadrants right those that sin willingly those that sin knowingly two different categories and both of them are falling under the same um, character and attitude the thin line of differences a person who sins knowingly is not necessarily who is sinning willingly right he is aware of what he is sinning but he is not willingly doing that probably unwillingly doing it but person who is willingly doing it he takes the supreme state of wickedness or wicked attitude without which he cannot live without that alcohol without that women yeah he is a womanizer without fornications without flirtish attitude without cheating without blaspheming without sledging without gossiping not able to live why because he is willing he always dies hard to do that thing and without which he is feeling somewhat empty what are these categories straight away they fit inside the unclean spirit category unclean spirits are of various kinds second timothy 3 1 to 9 mark 7 21 to 23 in galatians 5 17 to 21 45 40 to 45 different types of categories are there and you belong to any of these or all of these you are possessed by the demons and you fall into the unclean category without a doubt anybody has any questions please go through the bible i gave you the references yes and on top of that they are also having i mean you also need to be mindful of the seven dreadful sins anger lust sloth and all these things seven dreadful sins but many many mainline churches and traditional churches they limit the sinful deeds only to the seven sins no bloodshed in me no sloth in me no glutton in me i'm not a gluttonous person um i'm not a person who's this and who's that and yeah i'm all good no you're not all good you have to also go through the remaining 45 categories that i've that i've quote and on top of that you need to keep checking your spiritual condition allowing the word of god to travel through your life to your through your heart through your spirit it pierces and it brings all the deadly sins dreadful sins to light and to your notice and therefore you have a chance to overcome you have a chance to fight out while you live your life on earth against the powers of darknesses against the principalities against the heavenlies but if you fail to get involved in any of these introspections into in this fasting and prayers because why certain spirits certain habits certain character or certain troubles certain trouble makers in your life are not going to go away that easily because they are controlled by bunch of demons and that's exactly what we are going to discuss right a person had a legion 2000 devils in him demons in him 2000 different varieties of demons might be ruling you and you are not aware outwardly you look all fine you dress so nicely you drive your car gently and you get in your office you get the best of your cabin air conditioning room and best of the team and best of the positions best of the bank balances does not mean at all that you are free of unclean spirits yes and you have to go through these doctrines very carefully and allow the holy spirit to travel through your life and help you understand and he will give that light upon those shortcomings yeah those sinful deeds which you think it's all okay because that's how the world had trained the minds of the people and the world that the ruler of the world is devil he had coached the mind of the people in such a way that everything is okay anything is okay you call alcoholic as a shortcoming and it's just it's one of the dreadful sins they would laugh at you 
try that try doing that in the midst of your office you say that alcoholism is bad and it's going to be sinful you have to give an account in the day of judgment they will be laughing on your face yeah and probably you will have all the spit on your face because they'll be laughing so loudly and mocking you ridiculing you i'm giving you one example like when you go and talk about you know you cannot be shrewd and cunning in the corporate world they will laugh at you otherwise what happens you lose your job you got to be equally shrewd not necessarily joseph was not a very shrewd person mordecai was not a shrewd person daniel was not a shrewd person they were men of god and they had the prominent position in the kingdom of babylon and in the kingdom of egypt you all know that right and they were the man mordecai prospered more and more grew stronger and stronger bible says they were not shrewd people one of the humblest people that i've ever uh, read in the bible yeah men of god always in prayer yeah and my point here is the four quadrants we covered three already right unknowingly you get into the sinful deeds why because you are being carried away into your forefathers tradition for a very very long time this gospel had been hidden from your eyes and you never got a chance to go through it whose fault is it i would say it's your fault why because you have enough brains in your head don't you if your forefather asks you to lick up this one drop of cyanide would you do it brother answer this question would you do it or take up that lizard and eat it it's it's so divine you know would you do it you would not why because you will use common sense that which harms you that which kills you externally but that which kills you and harms you internally you are not bothered why because it's not hurting you here but it hurts you elsewhere it hurts you when you reach a place where no one would be able to save you it will be too late for you to discover that you had lived your entire life in deception and darkness but you might have been driving the best of the cars you might be wearing the best of the suits you might have got married to the best of the girls in the town one of the richest prominent businessman's daughter you could have married but all of these wouldn't save you yeah anything that hurts externally immediately you react why because that's common sense and why don't you use the same common sense for good spiritual sense i'm not even coming there hard at you use your common sense why should i believe the forefathers tradition who lived maybe a century ago and most of the christians 90% of the christians forget the identity for themselves to call as call themselves as christians is derived from the bible the word of god minus bible how do you call yourself as a christian tell me tell me what is your identity in this world i am a christian how do you say that brother my sister how do you say that not without the word of god not without the bible the gospel isn't it true or not tell me and did you read the bible which is nothing but the user manual for your spiritual life how you could prosper in your spiritual life how you could be used spiritually by god and how you could be a blessing to the nations and to the mankind and you are transformed as the children of light for which you need need to be transformed in your spirit and renewal of mind is imminent inevitable you need to go through it yes unknowing category unknowing category i'm talking about that four quadrants right knowingly willingly absolutely unclean spirits unknowingly living in deception but yes you are still filled with unclean spirit unfortunately my brother my sister you are not a wicked person but you are that stupid lamb or you are not stupid lamb you are that stupid goat Matthew chapter 25 goat was a sheep we have done a series it's available in the playlist you will understand why i go hard at you calling you that stupid goat why because you will regret so badly from the lake of fire that i had thought that i have the i've lived a life in purity in holy deeds because why you are not wicked you were not wicked but unfortunately you were not spiritual either you are not a useful instrument for god either at least those two guys unwillingly committed sins knowingly they committed sins they enjoyed the pleasures of the world the lust of the world yes they were cherishing their life and they were merrily living their lives and now they are burning the lake of fire they deserve to be there but you don't deserve to be there why because 
you were deceived and that's the worst thing that could happen to any mankind not only the believers not only the christians but also the unbelievers and when i think of these i really feel like sobbing for them yeah knowingly sorry unknowingly you go and fall into the lake of fire and you will be shocked and that's why please use at least your common sense and then the holy spirit will naturally help you with your spiritual senses you will be blessed with the fruit of the spirit the nine flavors god will give and the gifts of the spirit and the leading of the holy spirit you will be transformed to a person who walks in the spirit galatians 5 yes you need not go blindly with somebody's ideology somebody's theology somebody's philosophy somebody's doctrine everything has been given to you in your hands i'm doing a parallel series genealogy and evolution of christian congregations or christianity and i'm also touching on the christian beliefs and the foundation principles associated to it you won't believe how much it costs for the saints of god since the beginning of the early age christianity early age christians were tortured brutally murdered they had gone to so much gone through so much of harassment and they shed their blood precious blood i would say for you and me and that's why you have this bible you want to know how it all happened please go through that series you will understand and you definitely will be required to pay a big price you will be inquired to settle that account all resources had been given in our, into our hands yet how dare you live your life unknowingly you are that person who buried that one coin given to him or one room, that money given to him under the ground and god calls him you wicked servant that guy behaves like an innocent guy you know innocently he gives an answer i know that you are a very strict father i didn't know what to do i was very scared what if i spend and i would end up in a loss in the business yeah and his reason was genuine but then he did not seek the help of the father he did not seek the approval of the father he did not seek the advice of the father who are you to decide things on your own he decides things on god's behalf and therefore he buries it under the soil yeah and god says you wicked servant don't you know that i require an account of everything that i give everything that has been given to you and me today bible has been given the resources are given holy spirit is given angels to minister us they are given father in heaven is watching us neither slumbering nor sleeping psalm 121 and our intercessor is none other than lord jesus christ who is the mediator for us intercessor for us advocate for us 1 john chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 hebrews 1 3 mark 16 last two verses you will know that our jesus has taken that place as our intercessor so then after the lord had spoken to them he was received up to heaven and sat down at the right hand of god and they went out and preached everywhere the lord working with them and confirming the word through the through the accompanying signs saints of god went around and they preached the word of god and that's why you have the bible today and many people have worked very hard to preserve these scriptures it was not printed just like that many people they had to shed their blood it cost their lives how can you say unknowingly i lived my life in deception not possible you are no better or worse you are just like the person who committed sins willingly and knowingly and they were wicked people you are also wicked yeah never ever think that you go and pose yourself with nail biting and giving that innocent smile and innocent look to to, to god and asking him oh god i was not aware you know yes you're not aware judgment cancelled judgment closed throw him into the lake of fire no one can say that they were not aware there is no reason there can't be a reason that a person any mankind believer or unbeliever that they were not aware of god and the word of god and the name of jesus it's it's not going to be hidden from anyone's eyes if there are few people belonging to that category they will be the african tribes and stuff like that are you in that african tribe living in the woods and deep you know deepest um, uh, measures of the forest or something like that no you are you 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 have been educated well yeah unknowingly you cannot say lastly the last quadrant is unwillingly unwillingly a person commits a sin unwillingly and i have explained this multiple times even in the body mind spirit and soul series what happens is if spirit accepts jesus as a savior 
and he's redeemed and he gets into the water baptism and he confesses the name of Jesus as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. But what happens is his body and mind are soaked in the sinful desires for a very long time. Perhaps they were in certain sins for 20, 30 years. Now they are redeemed by God, by the blood of Lamb, Jesus. And now they have become believers in Jesus, but body and mind will not pay attention to the spirit. Spirit talks in a different language. All these days, spirit was listening to the voice of the evil spirit. And evil spirit, they were demon possessed. And spirit, body, mind, harm, they were working in harmony. And all three were listening. Of course, the spirit listens to the evil spirit. And spirit communicates back to the body and mind. Body and mind asks permission, saying, could we go and have alcohol? Yeah, and naturally the evil spirit says, of course, why not? That's the best uh, time where you could relax. It's a stress buster, this and that. But now the spirit talks in a different language. Why? Now the spirit's new partner is Holy Spirit. Said goodbye to the evil spirit and kicked him out. All the demons have fled the spot. Now the body had become the temple of God. And body and mind doesn't get adjusted. Why? Because that's called as the carnal desire, carnality. Yeah, atomic sin is still in us. The flesh is weak, Bible says, Matthew 26, 41. Yeah, carnality versus spirituality. We have done a series on those lines too from one of the epistles. I forgot which verse. It's available. It's available in the playlist. You will understand. Body and mind are not very coached. But what happens is they are not possessed of evil spirit. They are possessed of Holy Spirit. Yet there is a big battle warfare happening between the body and the spirit that is inside of you huh? and it takes time so what happens at some point of time the body and mind are so weak they don't listen to spirit then what happens is the spirit is not able to control the body and mind and you fall in sin you don't call that as deception but you're not able to control why because the sins of the past were so tremendous and that's why, beloved, watch out when you get into new habits, new practices, new um, relationships and new association and all that, whether it is good or not, that's why you need to seek for the spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, spirit of discernment as the mandatory gifts. These are mandated. One should not ask God willing brother, let him give me wisdom if he is willing. God willing, brother, let me give me the discerning spirit if he's willing. No, he's willing. You need to ask for it. But don't emphasize him in the similar way. Give me miracle gift. Give me prophecy gift and all that. No, no. You need to use your common sense also, right? For you to live your life on earth. For you to control over your body and mind. You need these three gifts and God is going to give it. But not without you asking him. Yeah. But the other gifts God decides. Because why? He knows the divine will. He knows the divine plan. And leave it to him. You don't have to take it too much on you and yourself. Are you all with me so far? Yeah? So my point is, anyone that is being involved in any sorts of um, doctrines like this must be very careful. Why? Because there are higher chances as you are listening to the doctrines you could get deserved, uh, dece sorry, deceived. Yeah, it might be preached even in your own church, yet it doesn't mean that it is, it is from the Holy Spirit. Right? So unwillingly when you get into such sinful deeds, what happens is, oh, it will take a long time. It will take a, it will be like a process, but slowly the spirit will keep fighting, keep fighting, keep punching the body and mind. No, this is wrong. Probably out of 10 times you were able to resist the sin, resist the devil six times, but you failed four times. But don't. Be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Don't feel so low in your spirit. Rise up again. Bible says righteous may fall seven times, but he will rise up again. God will help him. Yeah. Talk to the father. And then what happens? Six times becomes seven times, eight times, and nine times you are victorious. Only once you are failing, maybe very rarely. Then what happens? Ten out of ten times, you are all aligned. And body and mind now understands the language of the spirit very clearly. Why? Because... They have been, yeah, training your mind is also part of the Bible doctrines. Yeah, coaching your mind, mentoring your mind. Who does it? Spirit. For which you need Holy Spirit's help. Holy Spirit must be your, must become your partner. Else it's going to be difficult for you. Yeah, it's impossible, I would say. Not difficult, impossible. 
you won't be able to fight against the carnal desires why because temptations that pull is very strong beloved yeah but and the people who commit sin unwillingly someday they are going to be overcomers revelation 321 and hebrews 11 6 because why our god is the rewarder of faith bible says because why you have taken the weapon as a shield of faith and you're going to fight that good fight by faith romans 10 17 romans 10 9 ephesians chapter 6 uh 12 onwards you take and read sorry 9 onwards you take and read there are six weapons that are given in our hand into in our hands to fight against the principalities and the powers of darknesses and god will never let you down that unwilling category is the best category all of us will go through that unwilling category all the redeemed servants of god all the redeemed children of god some or other day they will have to settle down in that unwilling quadrant and everyone will go through the unwilling quadrant even paul was in that unwilling quadrant why because he says what my spirit wants to do it it doesn't do my flesh does everything against the spirit and i have this problem even he had gone through the spiritual warfare but he had overcame and that's why he was qualified to visit the saints of god in paradise and return back to earth yeah someday he was able to overcome and jesus always promises in john 14 12 and Matthew 5 48 you will be perfect as I am perfect father in heaven says Jesus says you will become like me and you will do things more than I have done in this world and you believe in that then you need to also believe that you will not become an overcomer instantaneously you will go through that unwilling sinful deeds for some time the battle is going to taunt you because why the sins of the past always see our past is not clean at all right all of us have a past which is full of dirt, filth, garbage, uh, so much of hatred, this and that, correct? And some point of time, you come to God and you have light upon who you are and now you want to be an overcomer. So what happens? The liver changes, the gear shifts. Yeah. And you take a different track or a different speed, you catch up. But still what happens is you have to travel in the same car. That is your body, correct? No? You can't jump into a neighbor's car. <laughs> what happens? That will be a funny accident, isn't it? Somebody trying to dive from one window to the next uh, car's window. Anyway, that window is shut. And are you such an idiot to jump, jump, jump into a moving car wh whose windows are shut? It's impossible, right? Nobody would do that. They wouldn't want to commit suicide as good as committing suicide. And you don't want to do that. But rather, you have to travel in the same car, but your speed is now shift to the next gear. But remember, you are traveling the same car. It has the same features. Slowly, you could change the shape of your car. Probably you could change the color of your car, the cleanliness and all that. You take it for water wash. Yeah, you dust it up and all that and you service it and all that. Overhaul it slowly, slowly. That's called as praying, fasting and praying, meditation in the word of God, grounded and rooted in the word of God, seeking the help of the Holy Spirit. And feeling the fresh anointing flowing in your life. Yeah, receiving the gifts of tongues and prophecy, talking to God in mysteries. I'm not against it, but don't blabber like that sheep, baba baba, or something like that. Yeah, it's not that language which you clap your hands and practice. You are a blabberer if you do that. Sorry. It's a language, angelic tongues. You talk to God in the tongues in the in, which is spoken in heaven, and no one can speak that language here. And devil doesn't understand. The only language he doesn't understand is the angelic tongues. And you should be able to interpret it. All these gifts you receive. It's part of that overhauling process. Yeah. It's part of that spiritual journey. But it doesn't happen instantaneously. Right. For you to reach a destiny from point A to point B. If the distance is 4,000 miles. Probably you end up driving for almost 3-4 days. In India. Especially Indian roads, traffics. You have to cover 600 miles. You end up at least driving for 12 hours. Normal speed. 100 kilometers per hour. If you were to cover 4,000 miles, you end up driving at least, you know, for a couple of weeks. It's something like that, right? It's a process. It's a journey. And obviously, you will reach your destiny. Why? Because our God is faithful. I told you. Our God is faithful. Faithful. He who began the good work in you will help you to complete in style. Philippians 1.6 says that. And he's the rewarder of the faith. Hebrews 11.6 says that. Yeah? And if you believe that when you pray, if you believe, you will receive it for sure. You need to have faith in God too. And that's called as a shield of faith. Faith with, against which you need to fight the wiles of the devil. The demonic weapons, you are capable to defeat them. 
without a doubt. Why? Because great is he within you than that is in this world. 1 John 4, 4 says that. And no weapons formed against you are going to prosper. Every tongue that rises against you, you will be able to condemn. And that's the heritage of the servants of God. Isaiah 54, 17 says that. Romans 8, 31 says that. You are more than conquerors. Bible invites you to be more than a conqueror. The biggest conqueror that I'm ever is Alexander the Great. Three-fourths of the world he conquered. There isn't a greater conqueror, not even Adolf Hitler. But Bible says, if you believe in the word of God, if you accept Jesus as your Lord of Lords and King of Kings, bowing your knees and confessing through your tongues, yeah, Philippians 2, 10 and 11, and um, John chapter 14, verse 6, he's the life, the way, and the truth. You're more than a conqueror, Bible says. You believe that? Yeah? And then you shouldn't be having any doubt on who you are. You believe that. Continue to live in that belief. Are you all with me so far? Sorry, I took longer to cover those four quadrants. Why? Because this is again another way of, in the previous session, we interpreted, very, sorry, we, not, we discriminated very clearly between clean and unclean spirits. And in this session, continuing on the same lines of discussion, we are yeah, discriminating the um, same, uh, like who all fall under the unclean spirit category and the clean spirit category. And that's where the Holy Spirit really helped me to divide into four quadrants. People who sin knowingly, willingly, unknowingly, all three are possessed with unclean spirits. Well, whereas the third category is the pitiful situation of a person, but he's no innocent before God. He's wicked. You don't deserve to live in deception. Absolutely. And the fourth category, unwilling category, someday God is going to help you, brother. Hate sin. Do not run away from sin. Do not flee away from sin. Hate sin. That's called as resisting the devil, Bible says. James 4, 7. Resist the devil and he will flee away from you. Resist him. Resist him. Saying no to it. James 1, 12 says, you learn to endure temptation. Therefore, you won't lose, lose the crown of life. Crown of life. Learn to endure the temptation. And who's going to train your spirit and body and mind? Who's going to coach? Holy Spirit. And for which you need to accept him. Yeah, Any spirit that confesses the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit will become their partner. This is the simple formula. And it's in, you know, in your Bible too. It's in your Bible. Yeah, Mark chapter 5. My time is almost up. Um, today's session is going to be 45 minutes to 48 minutes only. I have another 10 or 11 minutes. Let's see what best to cover in the time which we have. Okay, Mark chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. We have done already the discussion on that. And we spoke from the title, Demon Possession. Demon and Possession. Demons and Possession. We spoke about that. Mark chapter 5 verse 3 says, 1 and 2 I will read and I will go to 3. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of Gadarenes. We spoke about this country a little bit. And when, we, when, when he, Jesus, had come out of the boat, immediately there met him, out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. And that's where I had to take a lot of time, right? Spend almost three hours just to describe what is this unclean spirit. Although I have not gone into the law of uncleanliness, the title of the series, we have entitled the series as law of uncleanliness. And we want to describe much. The more you understand uncleanliness, you will know or you will learn how to live a clean life. And there is only one spirit that is clean, the Holy Spirit. And whoever possesses that spirit, they're going to be clean. Yes. And verse number three, who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him, not even with chains. I spoke on this also. Yeah, Mark 5, 3, also which has been explained in one of the sessions in this series that this is the deception, another deception which the evil spirit had brought in the minds of people that Oh, unclean spirits, evil spirits, sir, don't go near the graveyard. Hmm. Don't go near the dungeon. Don't go near that old house, no, which is 30 years old. Somebody committed suicide and yeah, it's demon possessed. Who said? Maybe yes, but not only there. <laughs> yeah, a demon lives right inside of you. Demons cannot live in a object, unliving object. You understand, huh? 
cars bungalows graveyards unliving object it needs life it needs life like how the bad bacteria multiplies in human body you understand it needs that environment it needs that um, nourishment from the body and therefore it's able to multiply and harm the body and therefore you need to go through one round of antibiotics killing both good and bad bacteria and starting from scratch the body builds the immunity from scratch and then the bad bacteria you need to eat a lot of probiotics and like curd and all the tablets they will the doctors prescribe yeah and the count of good bacteria increases and therefore your infection count comes down you understand yeah you, it needs an environment the bad bacteria similarly the bad bacteria as compared to the evil spirit or the unclean spirits they need the body that is human body to fulfill their lustful desires to fulfill their pas passions of the world worldly passions such as being gluttonous murdering cheating stealing because he is what murderer stealer cheater grabber liar yeah destroyer destroying each other he needs the human body he cannot accomplish those desires with the help of a graveyard with the help of a bungalow with the help of a car people see, some people believe this car no it's demon possessed how can a demon possess a car driving the car where from the top of the hill to fall down what happens the evil spirit cannot be killed even if the car were to dive deep down from the top of the hill down to the valley car is destroyed car burns into ashes but not the evil spirit there is no end for evil spirit until that day where he is going to be thrown into the lake of fire and the lake of fire is not yet formed revelation 2010 has not yet taken place don't do not believe all these lies yeah he needs human body therefore what happens you are distracted you are focused on the car you are focused on the bungalow graveyard this and that all unliving object and while you are distracted while you are defocused while you are not looking on yourself your lifestyle your habitual practices your belief system your spiritual priorities your spiritual values your spiritual doctrines oh he comfortably comes and lives inside your body <laughs> don't you think so that is the supreme form of deception and that is the state of christendom today oh we don't go to such places or oh, we don't go visit such houses or oh, we don't go to such uh, you know malls or something like that what do you think are you grounded and rooted in the word of god that's it that's the foundational stone for your christian journey yes that's a foundational principle for your spiritual journey and you lack in that forget it whether you go some place or not whether you don't go or not it doesn't matter why because the devil comfortably lives already inside of you and he can live only inside the human beings i will prove it to you with that we will close gen see again i am not able to proceed to mark chapter 5 verse 4 right i am supposed to do that i will tell you genesis chapter 6 verse number 2 that the sons of god saw the daughters of men you know who are the sons of god children of god means mankind you and me sisters and brothers right sons of god means angels and you know who are these angels fallen angels you want to know fallen angels take and read luke chapter 10 verse 17 jesus says i saw devil falling like lightning and you want to know more details go to ezekiel 28 and isaiah 14 i have no i have no time to cover that yeah if you want to hear how the devil became devil right lucifer was not created as devil but he became devil go to the series like know your enemy uh, it's available in the channel and groups of the evil spirit that does it mankind 50 sessions are there i've spoken all about devil because why we need to understand who the devil is we need to know who our enemy is else you are fighting in the air or blindfold right you're somebody is tying a black cloth around your eyes and the enemies are attacking you all around you one hitting on your head one kicking on your butts you don't know you're treated shamefully beloved don't you think so that is the situation of every christian today you're blindfolded with your traditions and with your belief and deceptions and god is annoyed irritated with all of you all of us i would say i'm no saint i also was like you even now also i battle out lot of spiritual warfares nobody can say that they are sin free then what happens you are that you you are nothing but devil 1 john chapter 1 verses 7 to 10 take and read i'm always giving references <laughs> i'm talking from your bible and my bible okay
both are same sons of god the fallen angels saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose how did how can they take wives they entered into certain men's body and they possessed those bodies yeah they entered into certain women's body and they possessed those bodies and these women would go and kind of create that lust you will see certain sisters dressing so unmodestly what do you think what do you think they have in inside of them unclean spirits like these fallen angels unclean spirits they are moving across the world back and forth through and fro and their main destiny is bottomless pit but they also have a headquarters set up in the second heaven first heaven is for the birds the clouds that you see third heaven is paradise in between these two they are having a headquarters and they move here and there back and forth and this is how they operate they don't have a form but they need a form therefore they need a body and you will see this sister dressing almost three fourth naked and she would be deceiving somebody lust for making some brothers to fall in lust and they both mate right prostitution and the sons of god that is nothing but the fallen angels they they deceive and they get into the lustful desires fulfilled yeah while you are focused around oh i'm not going to graveyard here and there comfortably all the work the sons of god will possess you that is the evil spirit unclean spirit possesses you and he will be you will be already involved in all of these deceptions but you are not focusing on yourself you are focusing elsewhere and that's exactly called as the act of deception you're all with me yeah i have to close here my time is up therefore we will continue from our next session from mark chapter 5 verse 4 onwards and i promise you next session we will straight away dive into mark 54 okay god bless you heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity oh lord thank you for teaching us those four quadrants and help us to analyze which quadrant we belong lord we want to belong to the fifth quadrant that is the holy quadrant sin free quadrant real divine will and plan of god being met in our life fulfilled in our life that quadrant we want to belong lord help my brethren in jesus name i pray amen god bless you um please subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlist and share this word with or the channel details with your brothers sisters family friends and relatives whoever it may be be an instrument in the hands of god to spread this precious word may god bless you and i will meet you soon through the next session bye take care